pals, wherever you may be, and welcome to episode 67 of Love at First Scent with me, Persilace. Thank you very much for tuning in, whether you're tuning in live or whether you're watching the recording. Uh, we will start by smelling a perfume, and I will also tell you what the rough plan for today is going to be. But the very first thing that I have got to do is just make sure <clears throat> that things are coming through, and it looks as though they are. We just need to get through an advert, and I suppose all of you have to get through an advert as well, but never mind. So, uh, a plan for today is that um, I'm hoping to do two episodes, one uh, straight after uh, this one, and the second one is going to be on the brand new version of Dior Homme for, from Christian Dior, so please try to stick around for that, and if you are watching the recording, then I will try to to link to that video in the video description below uh, so go ahead and click on that link if you would like to watch that video as well um, usual things that I like to start with please uh, keep comments and questions coming please feel free to uh, give me a thumbs up and hearts whether you're watching on Facebook or wherever please consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already done so please consider supporting my work on coffee you will find the link to that below um, and I'm not ignoring you if I don't respond to your comments straight away. It, it's just that I, I've had a few people sort of saying that when they are watching the recording, it gets quite distracting for them, which I can understand if I'm constantly looking at the comments um, as I'm going along. <clears throat> oh, now there's one that, that's immediately <laughs> made me stop. I didn't know about a new patchouli from Gala in May, but we'll come back to that because this is what I would like us to smell today. So remember what I said, we're going to do this one now and then we will do the new version of Dior, Dior Homme. And this is one that I genuinely haven't smelt yet, and I would imagine it's going to be something that will be quite unfamiliar to most of you, because this is the first perfume from, um, the, f from the magazine, from the publication Ne, as in nose. This is issue eight of Ne, with, um, I have to say, potentially controversial cover. Um, let me know if you if you have seen this magazine out there. Um, it's available on their own website as well, and I can tell you what that is. Seriously, seriously good publication. I cannot recommend it enough. I suppose I need to declare a bit of a self-interest in that um, a few issues ago, I can't remember exactly which one it was, uh, but I had an interview with Christopher Chong. Anyone anyone know who's, who that may be? I had an interview with Christopher Chong published in that, but you know, I, I'm, I'm not affiliated to the, to the publication in any way. Really, really um, fantastic piece of work. Always lots of interesting articles. I haven't read this one yet. Uh, this is issue eight, um, but I, I know from flicking through it that um, it's it's got an interview with Serge Lutens, you know, and that as in actual Serge Lutens, and it's not often that um, you know you, you you see him interviewed. Um, Please, 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 it feels really, really rude that I'm kind of not responding to your comments straight away, but I'm not ignoring them, trust me, I'm not ignoring them. Um, and what they have done, the editorial team, have decided to collaborate with some perfumers and to release a perfume. So I will, I'll, I'll tell you what I think of the fact that they're releasing a perfume in a sec, but I think we should, we should start by smelling it, because I suppose my view on what the fact that they're releasing a perfume may be coloured by what I think of the perfume itself, and I genuinely haven't tried it. The project or the brand that they're calling it is One Plus One, as you can see there, so it's Ne One Plus One. This perfume is called Hong Kong Oolong, and it was composed by none other than Maurice Roussel. If you haven't heard of Maurice Roussel, look him up, but you know, he's the chap who made Iris Silver Mist for, um, for Lutins, he made uh, Tocade for Rochas, he made Dante Bras and Musque Ravageur for Frederic Mal. So we're talking, we're talking, you know, perfume royalty here. And this is also a, co a collaboration with a Hong Kong designer called Alan Chan, who I confess I, I, I didn't know very much about at all. Uh, I still don't know very much about him, actually. Um, there is a press release, but um, let's see what we think of this. There's the bottle, and I believe this is the only size that it actually comes in. It's a 15 ml bottle of Eau de Parfum. I think we should smell it. Um, and then we'll get to comments and etc. etc. I tend to write like Roussel's work. He's very, very good with ambers as well. I mean, I think he did one of the best modern ambers when he created Amber Empire for, uh, oh, I'll get to the price, Umberto, don't worry, uh, for um, Atkinson's. Really, really gorgeous amber. Anyway, let's see. Can you tell I'm a bit nervous? Please be good, Ashfa. Yeah, me. Yeah, I think so too, Ashfa. Okay, 
here we go. So this is Hong Kong Oolong, the very first perfume from Ne. Um, here we go. <clears throat> Soapy. And really, as in musky soapy, it's lots of musks. Um, that was me being hungry for dinner because the mic is right there. I'm sure you heard that. If you heard the baby you know, down the other side of the hall last week, sorry about that. I, I thought Persilase will be fed soon. Um, you need to eat more. <laughs> Sorry about that. that was, well, maybe that was a kind of <laughs> gut reaction to the perfume. <laughs> this is live, people. You know I never fake this. Okay, initial reaction. <laughs> I've just read Rachel's comment. You thought it was a fly past. I, I ought to listen back to this actually afterwards <laughs> to see, to find out what it sounded like. Sorry, sorry. Apologies. Um, Okay, it's musky, but 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 there's also something doing a lot of heavy lifting here. Um, maybe, yeah, I think there are probably aldehydes. You know what I'm actually thinking. Straight, first off, if you were to think of Chanel um, Twenty Two, grab some ice cream and eat it with a fork. Oh, I would so love some ice cream right now. Actually, I no, see, I'm doing it now. I'm getting distracted. Stop, stop. I will come back to the ice cream. You know Chanel number no. 22, which is this beautiful, beautiful, prob probably the ultimate floral, uh, aldehydic floral. The, the, the aldehydes there are doing a lot of heavy lifting of the florals. Here, there are aldehydes which are not especially powdery. They're, they're, they're not, you know, sort of number no. 5, number no. 22 style aldehydes. But they seem to be doing a lot of heavy lifting of musks. Um, but I'm also, I guess, thinking... Oolong, you know, I'm, I'm sort of thinking tea, or when when is that going to come through? Um, this is this is to start with super clean. It's 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 if you can somehow imagine a sort of crossroads of the the, the super clean sense cold sensibilities of Chanel Twenty Two with the super musky clean citrusiness of um, CK One. Um, it, it's in those sorts of territories, which I wasn't expecting at all. It's really, really scrubbed clean. I've never been to Hong Kong. Um, I would love to go. But I imagine Hong Kong as this really crazy, bustling, busy place full of all sorts of smells of food and, and I guess, traffic, noise. Um, and this seems to be the antithesis of that. So maybe we will get our cue when we find out a little bit about the designer. Maybe, maybe this is a designer who's into... A minimalist sort of aesthetic because there is something very very streamlined and minimalist about this as well which I wasn't necessarily expecting you know when I think of Maurice Roussel as I said I think of Dante Brau, I think of Miss Cravageur I think of Tocard which are quite huge but also sensual this this is this has that kind of presenting itself on a plate block like construction but as I say, it's really, really clean. Maybe a kind of cedary woodiness coming through. Okay, so <clears throat> before I look at the press release, I ought to do comments because I really, really feel bad that I'm not interacting with you. The whole point of this is the introduction. So Rachel says hello from Cornwall. Hello to you as well. I hope it is not as windy as it is in, on the south coast, or, you know, as in Hampshire. Um, Umberto asked about the patchouli to, from Garlin in May. No, I don't have any news about that. So you're ahead of me on that one. Hi from Dublin. Uh, you have been missed, my leash, says Ashfark. Stop calling me that. Hello from Manchester. Um, Rachel says, I need those magazines. Yes, and, and also what Ney have done, if you look here, I haven't I haven't read these yet, but I, I, I was given them the other day. Um, they've done four um, publications, each one on a different um, material, in collaboration with IFF and uh, LMR, Laboratoire Monique Remy. So you can see there's one on Jasmine Sandback, one on Patchouli, one on Narcissus, and one on Rose. And I, I, I can't wait to sink my teeth into those. Uh, Ashfaq says, if I remember correctly, I saw a few Ney issues and Javoy. Yes, you would have, you would have because they, they sell them there, including in the London one. Sabra says, hello from Seattle. Thank you very much for tuning in. Cheers from Canada. Uh, the price, says Umberto. I, I've, I've got that on the press release. Although I think it's 
affordable. Although I guess you know, again, there's that thing of how 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 low does something have to be for it to be called affordable? Um, and then we had my stomach rumbling. <laughs> Um, Bonsoir from Paris says Chang and Forever Fragrant Kid says hello. Read the musks in it says Ashfaq. Any similarities with Kiel's musk? No, no. This is no. This is this is in in no way animalic. Although again, I have to say because they are musks, as you know, uh, they can react quite differently on skin and they can open up quite differently on skin. So I will have to give this a proper skin wearing. And also, don't forget, we do a blotter update to see how the perfume has developed on the blotter because we cannot, we must not make final conclusions about perfumes based on uh, just an initial sniff on a blotter. So, press release. Um, coming from Ney, I was expected to be good. So Ney, the olfactory magazine, is inaugurating a series of collaborations between perfumers and leading figures from other worlds. <laughs> okay, I think they mean other worlds on this world. Uh, these encounters will result in olfactory creations available as limited editions accompanying each new issue. The collection was developed under the direction of uh, Jean Doré, editor-in-chief of the magazine. So, the collaboration here is Maurice Roussel and Alan Chan. One lives in Paris, his nose buried in formulas, while the other lives in Hong Kong, surrounded by objects. Their collaboration, centering on tea, has produced a poetic creation where the prowess of a celebrated perfumer combines with the oriental aesthetics of an insightful designer. A special 16-page section in issue 8 uh, reveals the creative process behind Hong Kong Oolong. It takes an observational approach through interviews with Maurice Roussel and Alan Chan, while serving an informative purpose by shedding light on what perfumers really do and their creative processes, as well as sharing a fascinating conversation. Okay, so that's the magazine. The Creation, the first perfume in the One Plus One collection. Hong Kong Oolong by Maurice Roussel. And a quote from him, I built the composition around musky notes, which reveal themselves generously, like the long finish you get with a mature tea. Spicy inflections of cinnamon, cloves, cardamom, and ginger reproduce the warming effect of a hearty mouthful. I will need to try this on skin. I mean, okay, a, a freshness, yes, but not necessarily identifiable separate notes on the blotter. A base of sandalwood and tonka bean round off the accord with a milky sweetness. Okay, milky sweetness agreed. Then I incorporated the specific characteristics of oolong and that floral lightness. Okay, jasmine honeysuckle with its fruity and honeyed accents and a touch of magnolia, which I associate with China. Lastly, hints of leather, incense, and moss transform the green vegetal freshness of the tea leaf to bring out its fermented character. So I would go with green vegetal freshness, and maybe ginger actually now that I've read it, but I think like a lot of Roussel's work, there is this sense of it being an overall blended block that just hits you rather than separate elements that you can read and spot as it were you know like ingredient spot um i do want to find out a little bit about the designer actually it says here alan chan trained as a chemist but quickly switched his focus to the art world he worked for various advertising agencies before setting up his own studio in 1980. designer creator consultant and artist alan chan has worked for a host of pre prestigious brands including louis vuitton salvatore ferragamo alessi and seiko in the visual arts field, his work has been selected for the Shanghai Biennale and Hong Kong Contemporary Art Award, and he is the first Hong Kong artist to have been asked to hold a solo exhibition at the Shanghai Art Museum in 2007. He is a recognized figure on the international design scene with considerable influence on the younger generation of designers. But I suppose it doesn't, act, unless I've missed it, it doesn't actually say what sorts of things he tends to design. Anyway, uh, people were asking about price. According to this, if you buy it on its own, the 15 mil Eau de Parfum is 29 euros or $35. If you get it with the magazine, the two together will cost you 39 euros or $60. Interesting differential there. And, and you, you can look it up online. Uh, as somebody I think said uh, in North America, it's, uh, you can get it at luckycent.com or at ne-editions.us. And the French shop is shop.oparfum.com. But you can you can find all this. You don't need me to tell you all of that. Um, the let me just go back to the stream because I, I want to make sure that I haven't missed any comments. 
Um, Ashfaq says, one plus one is a curious name for a perfume line brand. Is there any specific reasoning? I think it's just the idea of the collaboration, right? So they're taking the perfumer plus somebody from an, an, another field of art sort of design in this case. So that, that's the thinking there. Um, Everyday Product says, hello, hello to you. So uh, this is, this is uh, I, I, feel, I feel like I'm being unfair to it based on what I read in that, in that press release. So I will have to do a proper wearing on skin. <laughs> In a general sense, <clears throat> I'm always a little bit suspicious when somebody or an organization or a setup that has been in the perfume world but not actually creating perfumes then decides to go on and create perfumes because that's when I think, okay, well then that, that completely changes your relationship with your audience because uh, especially a magazine that reviews perfumes and reviews them you know, critically and very, very well. Um, you you just think okay so 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 how how's that going to work would would they would they review this um if they don't um why not how does that affect their relationship with Maurice Roussel how does that affect their relationship with the perfume house that Maurice Roussel might work for you you get where i'm going with this i think i think it starts to create slightly blurred lines and and that doesn't necessarily need to be a problem because it 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 i think it's all a question of how you handle these sorts of things and, and whether the editorial team will be very frank. My thoughts also says Umberto, yeah, and whether the editorial team will be frank about the fact that, that they've got a perfume out there as well. Um, the, the thing that I, I, I suppose, take some reassurance from is that the, the editorial team at the magazine it is really full of integrity. They really, really care about perfume. They really know about perfume. Um, and so if if anybody, if any magazine was going to do this well, it, it will be them. So I, I will watch with interest. I will certainly want to try this on skin because I think you can tell um, I'm I'm not exactly bowled over at this at this initial sniff. Um, there's an interesting kind of woodiness coming through, maybe an incensey sort of woodiness, but you know, especially when I read all of those notes. Um, I'm kind of thinking, okay, milky, creamy, floral, fresh at the top, very, very musky. Um, I have a feeling it might be something that might wear well, though. So we shall see. Okay, for now, thank you very much for tuning in. After YouTube has done its thing, which, as you know, if you're a regular viewer, takes about five minutes, we will come back with, brace yourselves, the brand new version, as in a completely different version from the version that we have known until now, a brand new version of Dior Homme. Anyway, take care. Bye.